The Morph Ball is a modular upgrade to Samus Aran's power suit in Metroid, allowing the bounty hunter to roll into a spherical shape. While in Morph Ball form, Samus can move around, jump, place bombs, activate special switches, and squeeze through tight spaces. It's the kind of thing that seems pretty hard to replicate in something like Game Builder Garage. So let's get started. I have a basic orange person who can move around and jump, and I've created this small blue pipe tube to give us something to squeeze into once we turn into a morph ball. The way that the morph ball will work is that it will be a small person, about half the size of the normal person. We're doing this so that there is a big enough difference that it feels like you're actually changing your form and how you move through the world. We'll take our stick movements and our button press to jump and we'll attach those to the new smaller person object. Then we'll add a sphere. The sphere is what's going to be the actual visual representation of the morph ball. We'll make it set the connection point as center center and that it is non-solid, non-destructible, and non-destructive. Instead of just attaching it directly, we're going to use an X hinge connector to rotate the ball when we move so that it looks more realistic. We'll connect the person to the hinge and the hinge to the sphere. Then we'll need some logic to make the sphere go through its motions. But first, we're gonna add a texture to the sphere to make it look more like a morph ball. Make sure that the texture is the same size as a sphere object, and then give it a design. You could conversely use textures to animate the ball, but I think having it move organically would look a little bit more natural. We'll make the person invisible so you can't see them peeking through the ball and we'll start to add in the logic for the hinge. We're gonna use a map and a counter. We'll plug the counter into the map and the map into the hinge. So the hinge takes a value from negative 180 to positive 180. So that's what the output range will be on our map. It'll be negative 180 to positive 180. Next, we'll need to use an input range. In this case, I'm going negative 30 to positive 30. Since the counter is counting at one per frame and it's 60 frames per second, it'll take one full second for the ball to totally rotate. So our counter settings are gonna reflect that by being set to loop with an count range of negative 30 to positive 30. Now I'll just need something to count up or down. In this case, I'm just using absolute value nodons to take the value from the stick and always make them a positive number, and then we'll plug those into the countdown on the counter nodon. Now whenever the stick moves, the ball will rotate forward. I'm changing the movement speed and jump strength on the ball so that it looks a little bit more natural. So we'll see already that the person fits in the tube and everything is looking good so far. Now we're gonna start with the camera. We're gonna create a very simple box, make it so that it's only visible for now, make it small and attach a camera like you would normally. Attach the camera to the box and use the right stick to control the camera movement. We'll give it a Z offset of negative five so that we're looking at the object instead of from inside of it. And we'll connect it how we do a standard camera setup. The way that we'll decide where the camera is, is using teleport nodons. We're gonna be relying heavily on them in this build. Our person will have a teleport channel ID of A and the ball will be B to remember it more easily. We'll create corresponding teleport exits and attach them to our person and ball. Now with that set up, we need some logic to determine which teleport is currently being used. We'll use a flag node on, one for person mode and one for ball mode. When the respective flag is activated, it's gonna trigger that teleport each frame, so the camera will stay attached to either the person or the ball. We wanna start the level as the person, so we'll have an on start node on that will trigger the person mode flag to be turned on. The button that we'll use to switch between person and ball will be the X button. We'll add an AND node on to each of these states that I've wrapped in a comment to make it easier to keep track of. And we'll make it so that when a flag is on and the switch button is pressed, we'll switch from one mode to the other. We'll make sure that the button is set to on press. And the AND node on will do two things. It will turn the current state off and turn the opposite state on. 
That way we have a clean switch every time we press the button. See if it works, when you press the X button, we switch to the ball, and when we press it again, we'll switch back to the person. We can switch between them back and forth easily. So things are looking pretty good so far. Now, if you don't like working with teleports or they give you a headache, things are gonna get pretty tricky. We're going to add teleports for each of the three things we need to happen. We need to be able to send objects to the phantom zone. We need to be able to send the ball to the person and the person to the ball. We'll keep everything lined up so all the regular sized person teleports are on the left and all of the ball teleports are on the right. We'll set up a C channel teleport for the phantom zone, which is an off screen area where we're not seeing that current object, either the person or the ball. So we'll have a teleport in on the person side and a teleport in on the ball side. We'll set them up so that they teleport only person objects to prevent any kind of clipping or ruining the world. And we'll set a teleport exit somewhere off screen that you can box in if you want. Then we'll move on to the ball to person teleport. Since we're moving the ball to the person, we want the teleport in on the ball side and we need a new channel, so we're gonna start with the teleport channel D. We'll put the teleport exit on the person, since the ball is moving to the person, and we'll connect them in the right spot. Our last set of teleports is gonna be on the E channel ID, and since we're moving the person to the ball, we want the teleport in on the person side and the teleport out on the ball side. We'll hook those up to where they belong and move everything just a little bit so it's easier to see where the connections are. And now we can start hooking it up to the logic that we set up over here. Now we don't want two teleports to happen at the same exact time since that can cause problems. So we're gonna add a one frame counter to both of our logic states up here on the left. The reason is, for example, we'll want to teleport the ball to the person first, and then after one frame, we'll teleport the person to the phantom zone. So the ball goes to the person and the person instantly goes away. You won't be able to tell visually, but this way the logic won't get messed up. On the ball mode switch, we'll have the person travel to the ball and then the ball will go to the phantom zone. When we test it out, everything seems to be working pretty well. It can get pretty tricky with the teleports, so make sure you take the time to wire it all correctly. If we tried to teleport them to each other at the same exact time, it might just cause a problem. We'll switch the teleport out on the person to ball so that it's on top using Y negative, Y positive, so that the person does not teleport into the game halfway through the floor. And this next part, I'm gonna mostly gloss over since it's just set dressing. I'm adding an effect. I'm using the damage effect to sell the transformation from person to ball. And then I'm spending some time finding the right sound to go along with the transition. You can also find a constant sound for when the ball is moving. We just want little things that will differentiate playing as the person and playing as the ball so that they feel different enough. I'm gonna try to create a sound for the ball moving, but I have to add an and note on and play with the logic a little bit so that we need to get whether the stick is moving and the ball mode is currently activated. Then we're all done and that looks good. We want the ball to teleport to the phantom zone right away, so we'll get an on start node on and plug it into the ball's phantom zone teleport. That way we start as the person with no distractions. One of the flaws we're left with is that you can transition back into a person while in a tight space, and that will mostly make the morph ball form useless. So we're gonna add in a fix. We're gonna add a touch sensor that's shaped like a small rectangular upward facing antenna and attach it to the person. We'll have it check for anything that could be in our level. In this case, I'm using the basic shapes 
and then we'll get a not node on. Basically, when the sensor above the character does not detect anything, then we're able to switch. I do some debugging with the number node on, but I realize it's not working. Try to shrink the ball, that didn't fix it. What ended up being was that I didn't set the connection point properly. Y negative, Y positive will actually put the touch sensor above the ball. So now it's working. So what we want to do is move this touch sensor and this not node on over to our logic on the left and slot it in. The way we're going to do that is add an extra and node on and put it in place of one of the inputs of the original and. We're basically just replacing one red connection cable with the and node on that we just created. So it's checking for an extra case. And now we can't switch when there is an object above the ball. So we've troubleshot it a bit and it looks really good now. Let me know what you think if we did a good job. The no down count is only at about 52, which is not bad. You still have 450 to do the rest of your game. And you could change the size of your comments to fit more code. For example, you could add features that are only for ball mode or for person mode. For example, if you were to add the bombs to ball mode, you'd probably want to add it somewhere in there.